So chapter 6 went through the first account of the tribulation. The lamb was opening the seals. And when he opens a seal, it shows John the future. And there's still another seal left. But the last seal in Revelation 6 was the second coming. So that shows you Revelation chapter 6 was the first account of the tribulation. Now we have like a commercial break in chapter 7. And in this chapter you have 12,000 male Jewish virgins from each tribe of Israel. And they're sealed in their foreheads. This is the 144,000. And then when we get into chapter 8, the Lord is going to now open the seventh seal. And when the Lord opens the seventh seal, it's going to show John the trumpets. And it will take you through another account of the tribulation with the focus on the seven trumpets. So now, chapter 8, you have the seventh seal. Remember those first six seals, the Lord opened them. And that took us through the first account of the tribulation. So what you had was a look at the tribulation through those first six seals focusing on the four horsemen, the martyrs, and, then, and you saw the second coming, showing you that that was the close of that first account. Now, that seventh seal, and when the Lord opens the seventh seal, it's going to show John the seventh trump, the seven trumpets, and it's going to take you back through the tribulation again. So when the Lamb opens the seventh seal, it's going to show John the seven trumpets, and this doesn't mean the seven trumpets take place after the events of chapter 6. It's that John just seems to be recording things in the order as he was shown them. And this will start the second account of the tribulation. So he's basically taking us back through the tribulation and showing it to us from the angle of the trumpets. Just as the four gospels would take you through four accounts of the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ, Revelation shows you four to five accounts of the tribulation. Revelation 8, 1 and 2 says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, so the Lamb opens that seal and it's showing John something. And it says, There was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. So the seventh seal is showing John the seven trumpets. And look down at verse 6, Revelation 8, 6. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Now here are the seven trumpets and these seven angels. The first angel has hell and fire, causes hell and fire mingled with blood to come down. And the third part of the trees are burned up, and all green grass is burned up. So that shows you that the, the Lord does, is not some big environmentalist. Now the second angel sounds his trumpet, and it says, As it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea becomes blood. A third angel, a great star falls from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it falls upon the third part of the rivers and the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And many men are going to die because of the waters are made bitter. But the, the saints, most likely, they're going to have the sign gifts and be able to drink any deadly thing. So they're not going to go thirsty. The fourth angel the th uh, sounds, the third part of the sun is smitten and a third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. And the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. So dark times are going on spiritually, and dark times physically. And consider the evil that will be lurking around in the dark. This is what nightmares and horror movies are made of. What you're going to have is creepy critters running around, all hell broke loose, you're going to have a bunch of crazies running around, like a, a purge or something. Now, chapter 9, you got the fifth angel and, his, and that trumpet. And when he sounds, a star falls from heaven, and 
the star is given a key to the bottomless pit, and he opens the pit, and it unleashes devilish locusts on the earth. Revelation 9, 4 through 6 says, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, the locusts, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented. Five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Now remember, the Lord gave the apostles power to tread on scorpions, you know. So the saints are going to have that seal of God in their foreheads, that 144,000, and and um, the saints are going to have the sign gifts. They're going to be able to withstand the, a lot of these things going on. Just like, you know, a lot of those plagues in the book of Exodus didn't affect Israel. So in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. So people's going to be trying to commit suicide. It's going to be so bad. And they can't die. Why can't they die? Maybe they've done something to themselves that's gave them a, a, like a fake counterfeit immortality. Because that's what they're trying to do right now with those that transhumanism stuff. Give them a, a counterfeit fake immortality. Trying to live forever in their sinful state, you know. Maybe it's giving them a temporary immortality. To where they can't die. Maybe they've done it to themselves. Or maybe the Lord's supernaturally doing it. To where they just can't die. And they're just, just staying alive. And these things are tormenting them for five months. Revelation 9-11. And they had a king over them. Which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So there's another named angel. And the sixth angel opens up, or the sixth angel sounds his trumpet, and it looses the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And they slay the third part of men, and 200 million horsemen wreak havoc on the earth, and the third part of men are killed. Now notice the terrifying description in Revelation 9, 16 and 17. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them, and thus I saw. See, John, he's seeing a lot of things. I don't know if he was able to go to sleep after this. He probably was because I believe he had that going on that Paul had where he was fearless when it came to this world. But most of us wouldn't be able to go to sleep after seeing what John's seeing. He says, I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. That's a scary description. Now chapter 10, what you have is an appearance of the angel of the Lord, which is Jesus Christ. Revelation 10.1 And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face were as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. So, I'm going to explain to you why I believe that what you have in Revelation chapter 10 is the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ himself. We'll look at the first thing there. Clothed with a cloud. Well, a cloud, Jesus appears with a cloud. When, when he ascended, remember, a cloud received him out of their sight. And when he comes the second time, Revelation chapter 1 says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. Then it talks about a rainbow was upon his head. Remember, there is a rainbow round about the throne back there in Revelation chapter 4. And it says his face is as the sun. And his, it says, in his face was as it were the sun. Remember, Jesus' countenance is as the sun shineth in his strength. 
back there in Revelation chapter 1. And in Malachi 4, 2, he is the son, S-U-N, of righteousness that shall arise with healing in his wings. Now, notice in verse 1, it also says his feet are as pillars of fire. Well, remember, his feet were as it were if they burned in a furnace back there in Revelation chapter 1. And he's the one who walked around with the Hebrew boys in the fur uh, furnace of fire in Daniel chapter 3. So that's a lot of similarities there between this mighty angel and the angel of the Lord, the Lord Jesus. And uh, Revelation 10, 2, and he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. Okay, so he's got a little book open. Remember from chapter 6, or chapter 5, chapter 5 and 6, he's the one with the ability to open the book. Revelation 10, 3, And he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Well, a lion roareth. Who else could that be but the lion of the tribe of Judah? The Lord Jesus, as it calls him in Revelation 5.5. 5. Seven thunders. Don't you know in the scriptures that this his voice is compared to many waters, compared to thunder? And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, John says, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders have uttered, and write them not. So you see, John is seeing things, hearing things, being shown all these things by the Lord, and he's, he's writing them down. And he's, it seems that he's writing them down, not necessarily in chronological order, but in the order that he's been shown the things. And here he's told not to even write what he sees. So John, just one of the greatest characters in the Bible, not only did he live in the church age, he lived under other dispensations and even got to see some things that we may never see. It, and he is the disciple whom Jesus loved, as it calls it. And it's like when it comes to loving the Lord, he says, he's like the standard, the closest you can get. And it's like the closest you can get to the Lord, the more things you'll be shown. And since he's shown some things that he can't even tell nobody about, Maybe the closer you get to the Lord, He's going to show you some things that He's not going to show anybody else. And it says, And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. There's going to be a day when there's time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel, and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, and it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey." That's the way the Bible is, bittersweet. Got some things in there that can rub you the wrong way, can be bitter, but it's sweet as honey. The Bible's compared to honey. And it says, And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. You see, you've got to eat the book before you do any preaching. He had to meet the book and tells him he's got to prophesy again. But some believe this is a hint that John is going to come back and prophesy again in the tribulation, just like Moses and Elijah will come back. Kind of makes you wonder if John, when he was took forward in time to the future, saw his future self when he saw the future. That'd be pretty cool. Now, chapter 11, Revelation 11, 1 and 2. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. 
But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. So notice that a physical temple worship comes back. How could this be if the body of Christ is here? It says your body today, Paul said your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the Antichrist is going to sit in that physical temple in the tribulation claiming to be God. Now, that shows that the church can't go through the tribulation. Our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Antichrist can't sit in you. We don't do a physical temple today, but they're going to have one in the tribulation. It's a Jewish thing in the tribulation. God goes back to dealing with Israel. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, not the church's trouble. Revelation 11.3, And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand, two hundred, and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. So you had there forty and two months in Revelation 11, 2. And here you got two hundred and threescore days. And those are three and a half years. So it looks like it's getting into that last three and a half years. You have the two witnesses preaching, Moses and Elijah, for three and a half years. It says in Revelation 11, 4, These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Just as Zechariah talked about. Back there in Zechariah, if you turn back there, in Zechariah 4, 11 through 14, he actually talks about these two witnesses. It says in Zechariah 4, 11, Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. So, you see, that's back there in Zechariah. So that shows you that the two, the two anointed ones are already up there standing by the Lord, and those two anointed ones are Moses and Elijah. So we know that Elijah and Moses were Old Testament exceptions, didn't go to paradise, but actually went up to the third heaven because he had special plans for them. And in Revelation eleven five through 6, it talks more about these two witnesses, which most people believe is Moses and Elijah, and I believe that too. It says, And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. See, what you've got is a different time period. You've got a lot of strange things going on. Uh, today, we walk by faith, not so much by sight. In the tribulation, it's going to be faith and sight. You're going to be seeing, people's going to be seeing some things that are supernatural. But it says, these have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. So just as Elijah had the power of God to shut heaven, that it wouldn't rain, and just as Moses had the God-given power to bring plagues on Egypt, these guys are going to have the power to shut heaven that it rain not. These guys are going to have the power to smite the earth with all plagues as often if they, uh, as they want to. They're going to be able to, God's given them the power to, if they feel like they should kill somebody, they can kill them. Fire devoureth, proceeds out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And you'll notice that the plagues Moses brings on Pharaoh in Egypt back there in Exodus will match things that happen in the tribulation. That's a picture of the tribulation. Revelation eleven seven through 10. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So you see, just because it looks like the bad guy wins doesn't mean he does. I mean, he's killed them. He's killed Moses and Elijah. But then look what happens. And they of the people and the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. 
and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves, a very disrespectful thing, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. They're going to be happy that these two witnesses are dead because people of the Lord are going to be hated during this time. And it says, and they're going to make merry and shall send gifts, possibly around Christmas time maybe. Shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. So they'll say, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, we don't have to deal with these two bigoted, hateful, Bible-thumping, sin-hating parasites anymore. And they'll think they were just holding up progress and evolution. But look what happens in Revelation 11, 11, and 12. And after three days and a half, the Spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So imagine being happy over the death of these two witnesses. And then they just see them go up into heaven one day. It just looked like the enemy had won. But it says, In the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. So the seventh angel is going to sound. And the seventh angel sounds that trumpet, and the, it says the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. This finished off, that's, that's the second coming. When the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, that's the second coming. He comes down, takes over, brings in his kingdom. Revelation 8 through 11 took you through the second account of the tribulation with the focus being on the seven trumpets. And now we will enter into the third account of the tribulation, chapters 12 through 14, and here the focus will be on the unholy trinity, the devil, antichrist, and false prophet. That's your unholy trinity. The devil, antichrist, and false prophet. And that will be what the focus is on for this uh, third account of the tribulation. 